Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Can you hear us? Hello. Can you let us know if you can hear us? <clears throat> How's the audio going through, folks? Yep. So microphone check is the first thing that we're going to do today, just in case. Oh, yeah, it's always good for an old microphone. We check. run into any troubles. Yes, it seems that, that people can hear us. Um, next thing we're going to check is the game, but um, not now. So as soon as we get into the game, you do please let us know if the sound is all right. So, yep. um, yeah, so welcome everyone to our um, first anniversary stream. We are celebrating 10 year anniversary of Train Simulator. So first of all, Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's yeah, so good. Busy been, day. A long, been a long week, but uh, it's the day. weekend. Yeah, it is the weekend. We're really hoping you guys are keen to watch our stream um it's gonna be quite an interesting one we're not gonna have anything too special this time but um to some extent we do so um the it's gonna be awesome don't yeah, understand it's yeah. gonna be it's awesome gonna be all, i never said it wouldn't be. um <laughs> the uh, stream plan is as such we instead of playing just one or two um, scenarios or rules that, that like we usually do Instead, we are gonna have a small blitz, and it's gonna be a reverse blitz, in fact. We're gonna go back in time, and we're gonna start with um, uh, the one of the most recent routes, and um, we have, I think, nine routes on our schedule, and we're gonna go all the way back to the very first route that there is on Steam. Uh, so we're gonna go from 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 now back to 2009. And we're gonna, in, at the end of the stream, we're gonna be looking at the oldest stream that is available right, right now on Steam. Um, we have a pretty cool anniversary sale going on right now. So that um, sale features pretty much, I think it's the biggest um, sale um, to date. It has a lot of products and great um, discounts. I think many of you already know about it, really. Um, so yeah, um, we'll be looking at some of the routes that are available uh, on that sale. And uh, also, I guess one of the things I'll point out is that we have revealed Tease Valley Line um, a couple of days ago. We've launched a trailer and we are um, currently accepting pre orders so on, on PC. If you are on PC and if you would like to pre order, you get a 20% discount. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't um, apply to uh, console, but that's, that's how it is. And um, so, yeah, the, the, the pre order ends on the 23rd of May. That's when the new um, uh, DLC actually launches. So we're um, very, very keen to um, to see you playing this soon. And um, just to remind everyone, we will be running a pre-release dev stream next Wednesday. So yeah, I'm gonna end on that. Um, for those who are new, please let us know in the comments. Um, we are really uh, keen to hear from you. If you don't know what's going on, just ask and uh, we will explain it to you. So the very first route we would like to play today. Oh, I forgot, forgot to mention. So we, will, we have nine routes and so we'll not be dedicating a lot of time to each of those. Maybe about maybe eight, ten minutes. Just I'm going to put uh, um, a stopwatch just to make sure that we don't run out of time too quickly. Um, yeah, so we're about to begin and we're going to start with a pretty cool route. In fact, it is very closely related to Dovetail Games. Um, this route is called Chatham uh, Main and Medway Valley Lines, and um, we're gonna go through uh, one of the scenarios called Gillingham to London Cannon. Is it Cannon? Cannon Street. Cannon Street, right. Yeah, so this is this one. Yeah, guys, if you have any problems with the, with the sound and game or microphone, please do let us know. We are going to fix everything. But let's jump straight away into this beautiful scenario. And have you seen this, Matt? This is a oh, new... Oh, yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's a new TS-19 a screenshot contest. Had a look through the entries that are in there. What was the theme for this week's? It was Slow Summit. There were yeah. some beautiful pictures on there. There were some beautiful pictures, but especially for TS-19. And I oh. really like this one. Um, it's BI-86, yeah? Uh, no, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, I like the, those sparks in the smoke. Mm. They look very beautiful. And in the background, you can see as well, it's um, overlooks in a valley. So yeah. it's, it's, it's it's really stunning. Yeah, so some really nice So congratulations, Rafael Brovsky7, on yes. that. Yes, congratulations. Um, yeah, but if you want to take part in the contest, feel free to go to our forums and um, take part. So, yeah. Chatham um, mainline, right? Is that what it's called? Yep, so, Chatham uh, mainline. This is a bread and bone 
Dovetail Games. This is where it all began, and this is where we are right now. Um, we're it's not the first route that we did that passes by here, but it's certainly, I think, the latest one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we are, Dovetail Office is located in um, a town called Chatham, so it's Medway, for those who don't know, it's a small, or not really small, but it's an area of several smaller towns connected with each other closely through history. And um, we are in one of them. So, I mean, for the person who doesn't really live here, or has never been here, uh, or visiting for the first time, it may seem that it actually is just one big city rather, in, rather than a, um, a collection of um, smaller towns. That's the feeling I've, I've, I've had myself when I've just moved here. Um, this is actually a very good, apologies, um, this is actually a pretty good way we can show where exactly we're located. So this is um, Gillingham train station. Uh, it's very close to where I live. In fact, I live just around somewhere there, literally five minutes from the station uh, walking. So um, I found my house and I was quite surprised. Um, I will show you when we move on, when we go get to Chatham, I will show you where the um, Dovetail Games office is actually located. and. Um, yeah, you should be able, if you want to... Doors. That's pretty stupid. Um, doors, thank you very much. It's a long day. Um, yeah, so the very first thing you will notice is that um, it actually, the route resembles very well the way how it, how it looks in real life. And um, I was surprised to see all these trees that I normally um, notice when I, when I walk from, from work to home. It's, uh, it, it, the level of detail is certainly um, on the top level. Yeah. Um, yes, it's called the uh, Chatham Dockyard. That's exactly what it's called. It's a nice area, Chatham Dockyard. It's a historical dockyard which was closed back in the 60s, I think, um, or, or 80s. So it was, um, it was a, okay. It was a it, it was a pretty big employer for the area. Um, unfortunately, it closed, which changed a lot of things in here. But um, we are here now, so um, I guess um, whenever something stops existing, something new, maybe even better, um, appears. So that's where we are located. EC says, "Is this the route with the milk float?" No, you're thinking of Portsmouth Direct Line, EC. Yep. So the scenery is pretty amazing on this one, especially for TS-19. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. We're not going to go too far. We're going to go only to Rochester, so we're going to have two stops, basically. Um, Dave Melody says he was stationed uh, here when he was in the Royal Navy. Oh, really? Yeah, there's um, a lot of military history associated with this um, region. Um, there are a couple of monuments in Gillingham. I think it's right in between Gillingham and... Um, Chatham, and there's a very big monument for those who, uh, for those sailors who died in First and Second World Wars, and I, it's actually a pretty good place for meditation, because uh, no one goes there. Um, yeah, and um, do we have any questions right now? Is there uh, anyone who is new and doesn't know what's going on really and who we are? Um, if you're watching through Steam, yeah, we are on Steam, so that's good. Yeah, if you've got any questions, folks, fire them in. I uh, will try and answer them as I can. If I've missed any while we've been introducing getting introed, then uh, do just fire them again, and uh, I'll try and get to your questions. Yeah, you definitely should stay because stay till the very end because at the very end you will see something that many people don't know about. A pretty cool um, couple of routes that um, we don't really pay a lot of attention to, and we don't know that exist. And I mean, we have so many routes now, and. Um, uh, it's, it's very easy to to, to get lost, but um, this is the very first one that we'll go, go through. Um, a lot of history is of Dovetail Games is associated with this particular route, and um, yeah, it's pretty impressive um, how you guys. Is the did DTG it. office is in that castle in Rochester? No, that's just my <laughs> office, baby. <basically. laughs> that's just my office. <laughs> Have you, I've been there. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool castle. It's or at least it's history. the annex to my office. <laughs> Yeah, Rochester is a really nice place. I think Rochester is where um, Charles Dickens comes from, right? Or where he died or something like that? They do. Yeah. Uh, we used to have a thing called Dickens World here as well. Oh, really? Yeah, until... So... Bad things, so they, uh, it doesn't exist anymore. This mountain over here, sort of hill, is a um, border between Chatham and Gillingham. So we left Gillingham and going straight into Chatham. Um, when we get closer, I should be able to show you where our office is roughly located. 
So we're going fine. Um, actually, I live very close, so sometimes I go to this hill over here and overlook right this line. So it's pretty cool how yeah. trains are moving back and forth in here, quite often as well, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, my, my driving may be a little bit off today because there's a lot of routes and um, I have to talk quite a, li quite a lot. And you might have seen a uh, little graffiti showing DTG on the... Uh, did you see that? I love this set, this whole section of the boot with the going through all these tunnels. Absolutely stunning bit of the route. Yeah. It really is. Um, Pete, any progress fixing DSD bug on the 52? It's been raised with the dev team now, so it'll be on their uh, on their queue. Yeah, so we're closing to Chatham. Uh, at that point, I will try and show you where our office is. Was DTG located. originally in Bromley? No. Um, so when RailSim.com originally formed, it formed out of Guildford. Uh, and then um, it was actually early days. It was here uh, on the dockyard uh, in a place called the Joiner Shop. Um, and then moved out of the Joiner Shop to the... Um, the, the observatory um, out just outside the dockyard and now we're back on the dockyard again at the, in the fitted rigging house yeah it's a pretty good cool place in here it's it's, it's a lot of history in here I, I love headlights. working uh, on the dockyard because you look out the window and you can see the boats going up and down and just being next to the water with the you know the ambient right. sounds of the water is so let's find our office so this is river Medway and if I'm not mistaken, our offices are located somewhere around here, right? So this is a small pier that we have. It's, it's the one that we would, we would see if we looked out of the window on that side. So roughly here is where our fly offices are there? located. You should be able to fly over there. Right there. Mm -hmm. There's no limits on where you can fly with this. I'm not, I don't know, actually, that might be it. Yeah, I think that this is it, somewhere around here. I think this area here. Okay. Yeah, or here. Anyway, do you get the idea? So um, we are right on the riverfront. So, so um, the the views are quite stunning in here, and especially in summer when everything's green, it kind of reminds me of Italy. You know, all the how the way um, those houses are built um, over um, um, over the shore. It, I really like it. It's okay. a lovely area, totally. All right, let's move on. <coughs> We're going to go to Rochester now, and that's, this will be our last stop um, on this route. So, we're, as I said, we're blitzing, so we're gonna go, are going to go straight to the next route. Nicholas um, says, it's a shame your offices weren't modelled when the route was made. So, we did actually, I mean, certainly when London Faversham was made, which was the first time we passed this area, um, the, there was a debate about, should we model our office? And we came to the conclusion it was so far away that it was kind of a waste of time. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it good. would hurt people's frame rate potentially having a mod detailed model in there and uh, no one would see it. So it's uh, that's the reason. It's it's just too far away to actually um, to do, unfortunately. But that was before we moved, right? So, yeah, so the, the, the route was released in 2008. So a fitted drinking house is closer, so. Yeah. When you at the observatory when that was made? No, London, London Faversham, we were still in the joiner shop. This one, we would have been in the observatory. Yeah, so we're cl getting close to Rochester. Again, I really like walking. Rochester is quite nice. It has a deep history. I think it early mentions are somewhere as early as Roman times. So um, it's one of the one of the oldest towns in the UK, basically. I think, unfortunately, it, wasn't, it, it is also the only city in the UK to actually lose the city status. So, yeah, there is um, quite a lot of history. So, in, on the background, you can see Rochester Castle and the Rochester Cathedral, both are ancient buildings, basically. Built Interestingly, this also is the original Rochester station we're going through now. Just recently, um, they, they built a new Rochester station um, just down the line, um, and that's what's left of the original one. Hmm. So yeah, you can see Riverbank Falls, the pretty much the whole area. Um, the whole area is River Medway. When Medway is um, feeding us all, pretty much here in in this part of the of Kent, really. Baked Bean Kid says, "So how come you've had so many offices? Don't you pay rent on time?" <laughs> no, I'm just really fussy about my view. To be honest, I get bored and then I start wanting M&Ms in a particular colour, and so we have to move. <clears throat> 
Um, it's also really interesting that you know we're in the joiner shop when we re- when we decided to rename rename ourselves to uh, Dovetail, and of course for those that don't real don't recognise it, a dovetail is a joint and would have been the kind of thing they did in the joiner shop. Right, so we're here in the beautiful Rochester Castle and Cathedral are in the background. So um tell you one of my favourite bits is once yep. you've got the doors open, fly over down to the river. Uh no, straight on as if you're going you've got a strewed. Mm. Okay. And just over here on the right, there's a particular landmark. <laughs> it's a submarine. It's a Russian submarine that beached. And when we first um, did um, London Farrowsham, people were saying, I wonder if they'll model the submarine. Well, of course we're going to model the submarine. I didn't see it. <clears throat> I've not been here for too long, to be fair, so <laughs> I'll get a chance. We do have a submarine um, in our dockyard as well. Yeah. So we have a couple of ships back um, from... Oh, let me just pop you back to the port yeah, stream while you yep. do that. Or maybe show our faces. Oh, actually, instead. we can yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah. Full yeah. screen we- chat. We have our. Um, oh yeah, there you go. Let's get the next one up. Yeah. Thank you very much, Matt. So the next is we're gonna go straight to Southwest China to Sichuan Pass, which came out didn't came out in 2017, not that long ago as well. Um, this is probably one of my favorite uh, routes from that area. It's quite detailed, so I love it. Let's go. It's gonna take some time for us to find everything, but at least you're not seeing it. Uh, Rob Putt says, when are you going to allow models of buildings and assets and stuff to be uploaded to Workshop? That probably won't happen, to be honest, um, because the minute you allow that stuff to go up, all of a sudden, then there's a lot more copyright and licensing things that need to be dealt with. There is also the probability or the possibility for people to upload stuff that they don't have the rights to upload. At the moment, they can create, they can upload scenarios, they can upload routes. You can't actually create new assets, so all you can do is move around essentially in place and so forth the assets that are already in there. Let me switch back to yep, that. We're back. Matt, do you. Uh, sorry, I, do I interrupt you? Uh, go on, carry on. I can carry on um, with the answer in a minute. Yeah, so I was going to actually start talking about this route a little bit. If you want to read out, if you can't, if, if you, unless you Let don't me remember, have a read. I think the first two paragraphs will be more than enough. Oh, well. Oh, what? Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, where was you? We're, we're, we're sitting on each other at the moment, uh-huh. right? Yeah, we are, definitely. Uh, right, Western Sichuan Pass delivers a unique mountainside passenger operations throughout the Sichuan province of southwest China and is brought to life courtesy of partner program developer Simtech Vision. Western Highlands form perhaps the most striking scenery in all of China and nestled within the mountains of towns such as... I'm going to completely mess this up. Uh, Duzhang Yan, Wenzhuan and Maozhan. All of which are connected by the 160 kilometer long Western Sichuan Pass. The passenger experience ex- uh, and uh, the passengers experience an unforgettable journey across this line. All while the driver's skills are put to the test on a ruling grade of three percent. I seem to recall this is high speed and freight as well. Yeah, so I think it's one, up to 160. You remember, right? This has got a, a beast of a freight loco. Yeah, what I do, what I do like is these Look mountains. At that view. That's, yeah, that's, it's beautiful. It's really, really nice. I mean, really, really nice. I love it. Yeah, we're not going to be going too far, so um, probably only about five minutes or so because we have to move on. We have a very little, a limited time, but we need to show to you as much as possible. Uh, does Train Sim have a big Chinese following? It does have a fairly big Chinese following. Yes. If so, how do you distribute it? Uh, Steam exists in China as well. Yeah. Um, and the game is localized in Chinese as well. Mm. Yeah. We're getting there. Um, so yes, uh, on the um, on the editor, the uh, oh, sorry, on the um, assets that people were talking about uploading. Essentially, it is down to uh, there'd be a lot of extra work in moderation and curation. There'd be uh, almost everything everyone uploads probably would be violating some sort of copyright uh, or license. And then there's the chance of people using it for piracy purposes as well. As, as hum- unfortunate as that sounds, um, it would become a significant extra workload to try and manage that. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of the long and the short of it. Um, and there'd be really no way of preventing it short of just assigning people to just go through and curate everyone's uploads um, before, they are, uh, before they're allowed on. Why is it not moving? Why is it not moving? What happened overnight? Let's add the graph up. 
Yeah. No, no, it is. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. So obvious, but happens. Uh, you man, uh, what was the thinking behind training some more Manchester to Leeds? Why the choice of time period? Um, there's a number of reasons. One, modelling in the modern era required the first um, Trans Pennine licence, which wasn't available. Um, so you'd miss a large number of services. And I don't think there was a northern licence available at the time either. So really the modern version of the route was a complete non-starter for many reasons uh, related to that. Um, plus also, a lot of the routes for TS1 at the time um, had started to be consistently modern routes. And it was almost a case of, well, in producing new routes, particularly as we go train sim world, it was, we should make sure we don't stick to modern routes. Let's stretch our legs and do other routes as well. So, mm. you know, it was uh, it was a really good opportunity to um, to do that. I mean, it is one of my favourite eras, the BR Blue. I mean, I'm a Steam fan, but BR Blue was when I grew up train spotting. So, but that's that's not the, really the reason we did it. It was just, that's just a, a personal yay to me. Um, but um, look at those views. Absolutely yeah, yeah, stunning. yeah. It's, it's really good for, I mean, it's really beautiful. I mean, absolutely. And it's quite a long route, actually. If you press the 9 key and go and have a look at the map, you can see, it's, it's remember rightly, this one is quite a lengthy route. Wow. You've got some lovely little... What? Wow. You've got That's some lovely little scenic options in there with the different horseshoe curves and, and loops would, and things as well. That would take ages to, to drive through. It's quite fast, though. Yeah. So. It is, it is. I think up to 160 kilometres per hour, so... It's something different, definitely. If you are a little bit tired of the British, US, and German, definitely something to look into. Yeah, how are you guys? Are you guys excited about Tees Valley Line? I'm sure you guys are all extremely excited, just as we are, but um, Tays, it's coming soon. Tays says, glad to see a class 37 in TSW. I tell you what, I am so, so happy for that 37 in TSW. I was, it is so much fun. I was really impressed by the sound. Yeah. Oh, that's just... Of course, we're completely biased, but. Yes. That's all I'm saying. It is, it's really good. And the 08 as well. Um, uh, yeah. But you will see, guys. It's not that long left. So as we're approaching the tunnel, um, we'll see if it's closed. But we're going to start wrapping up this route. I mean, we've showed you a little bit. So that will be more than enough because we need to move on. And mov moving on, we'll be into... Sorry, Matt. I need to make sure... Uh, Rob Putt says, what is the roadmap for TSW? Still confused to the ongoing development of TS alongside TSW. So consider TS and TSW to be two separate things, both still steaming away. Um, there's still content being made for both. Uh, and in fact, in the last major update for TS 2019, it even got the 64-bit update. So there's code updates going mm. on there. Um, so there's they're both still in active development. So don't consider one interfering or anything with the other. They're both very much of, uh, a priority. Um, and then in terms of Train Sim World, um, is Steam in the pipeline? Steam has to be there. Uh, it has to be there. Um, I mean, or I'm gonna get really grumpy, bluntly. Um, I'm, I want Steam as much as everybody else does. So, uh, and so does everybody here, to be honest. But, um, we needed to get some foundations in place and make sure the stuff we'd always, we've already done was right. So part of that is getting this CSX physics update out, which hopefully won't be long now. Um, and um, once we've got that out, we've lined everything up, um, then we should be, uh, we should be good. Um, and I've already got some designs down. The problem with Steam isn't actually the complexity of the physics. The problem with Steam is making sure everybody can drive it because Make if you release a Steam Loco and only a small number of the people in the world who would love and enjoy Steam, everybody. If you talk to most people that have never played Train Simulator, sit them down in front of the game and say, "What do you want to drive?" They say, "Steam Engine." You know, it's absolutely. But then what happens is, having sat down in front of that Steam Engine, they go, "Well, I don't know what to do with it," and then they get really frustrated with it and say, "Oh, can you just give me a diesel or an electric?" Um, so, ooh, where are we now? We are in Switzerland, so um, we will be playing Albula Alliance and more heaps and to see Oh, this is Thompson Interactive. Yes, and we will we'll be in the passenger mode in this one, so that we can just simply enjoy the breathtaking views of this area. Um, if you guys have been here long enough, which is probably just a couple of months, we did um, 
um, a, st a stream together with Mr. Thompson where we were showcasing his R RHB enhancement pack um, 03 and the whole stream were, was dedicated to his um, works so um, we are very happy to show it to you again I think to me it is one of the fa my favorite um, roots of this area I suppose um, it's just the collection of roots really it's not just one there's plenty yeah, there's for a range of roots that, uh, to check out um, and we're also absolutely enjoying the fact that we drive as passengers right now not drive ride and um, we don't have to do anything but just enjoy the breathtaking views um, and will be even better in about a minute or two um, I'm sure many of you have played this, but um, we are absolutely delighted by this route. That's one of my favourite views, actually, is when you can see the train out the front. Yep. I know whenever I've ridden on the train when I was a youngster, I was always hanging my head on the window, mm. looking out, trying to see, my, see our train further ahead of us. It was always one of my favourite things. Yep. So um, this is our beautiful, beautiful route and the beautiful area in Switzerland. Which, which I really want to visit eventually. Uh, well, T's and NTP have crossovers like the German routes low coast. That one's a bit more challenging because the 37 in the train load metals livery would not have been seen in the 1983 Leeds Manchester route. So it's not strictly appropriate. Uh, I don't think the peaks would be seen on the Saltburn line by that point. I think they'd all gone. Um, possibly a BR Blue 47 might have um, shown up on the Saltburn line. So. I don't know at this point. Um, it's a little bit tricky, um, but uh, I've, I've got a few ideas mulling around. It may be that some of those come to fruition later on. Yeah, um, we actually have a London to Brighton, do we? Yeah, we do have a London to Brighton, but um, it's not for class 460. It will be 442. So, but Ooh, spot excellent. on though. Um, you 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 guessed correctly which of the routes will be <coughs> further. So, uh, just a reminder: we're going from the most recent routes back all the way back to the very to, to the very beginning. So, there's one route per each year. Um, Albula Line was released in to, on the first September two thousand and six. 16 and then we'll be going back to 2015 with a pretty nice German route as well. Mm. Uh, Steam Leap says, how's the Steam going to work? Will it have various options on realism controls or is everyone going to have to drive in noob simulation mode? TSW is about upskilling players to, and teaching them and encouraging them to drive the, with a fully realistic experience but making it accessible to everybody um, which means that ideally, and no promises or anything here, but the idea is that the full-on simulation is available and then you have assistance helpers um, turning on and off dif difficulty levels and things which will then make it more accessible experience. That's really, it's tuning that, that oh look at that. That's my favourite part. Look at that view. It's really tuning that that's the sort of the key um, challenge really uh, with Steam to getting it right so that you don't compromise the the, the, the full-on experience mm. but in the same way you also make it to where everyone can enjoy it. And you don't guys don't have to be a passenger, you can drive this, so it's another benefit of playing train simulator. Yeah, but it's breathtaking. Absolutely. For a for a game that's <laughs> ten years old. Uh, can AI only trains be created easier, says Rob J, i.e. a BR Swallow one two five trail around Darlington and Leeds. Um, if you mean the asset itself, I mean if you want to make an asset that you can't see in the windows, then you don't have to model the interior, I guess. Um, or you can do a simpler model if you don't allow the player to walk inside it. It's up to you. It's what you mean by an AI-only train. And if it's a normal train, you want to be able to ride it as a passenger or you want to be able to open the doors, you're almost modelling the entire thing. And technically, remember, the HST that comes with Great Western Express is not appropriate as a BR Blue-Grey reskin because the nose and the cab are different. Um, so, um, yes, you can repaint it but it's, um, it's not a straight repaint. It, it would need some reasonable modeling changes on those areas. All right, let's, let's move on. Thank you very much, Matt, for um, keeping our audience excited while we are switching routes. Uh, is the TSW Class 52 horn correct? It was recorded from a Class 52, so one would hope so, yes. Oops, sorry. Some train horns in the UK, they sound really weird. 
it's uh, <laughs> it's really odd. And it's like that's not a real train horn. It sounds like someone blowing through a leaf or something. Yeah, guys, please do let me know if the sound in the game is too loud because I can hear everything in my um, headset. So um, just in case, checking with you. Uh, can you guys love all me about rail driver support, says DJ Van Gilder. Since the Trains World came out, you said you're working on rail driver support, but it's still not here. Even the 64-bit version of TS doesn't support rail driver. Okay, a couple of clarifications on that then. Uh, one 64-bit version of TS does support rail driver. Um, it has supported it since launch um, of um, TS2019 64-bit. It took a little bit of time before uh, PI Engineering were able to get their software update to their MacroWorks software out. Uh, but I believe that's been done for a while now. So you just need to make sure you're using the 64-bit software. And in fact, I believe there's a freeware interface system that um, someone's written using uh, that does all sorts of stuff. And uh, that's been updated to support the 64-bit interface as well. TS 2019, no problems with 64-bit, and that's been supported since day one. Um, TSW, we're not currently working on rail driver support. We've never been working on it. All I've said previously is on the list to do. I'm a huge fan of rail driver and other external hardwares like throttles and all sorts of things. Um, so it's uh, it's definitely on the list of things that I want to get done. But we've, it's there's a limited number of hours in the day. There's a limited amount of time and a mountain of things that people want us to get through. Um, and we're focusing on the things that affect the most people. Um, we rail driver, I absolutely do want to get that support in there. But um, yeah, there's uh, a limited number of time. All I can say on that one is watch this space. Uh, when there's updates, I'll let you know. Mm. Uh, Rob Part, are there any DLLs we can hack in TSW? Well, actually, the raildriver.dll file that's supplied as part of rail. Uh, it's called raildriver.dll. It's a bit of a misnomer, really. It's actually it's the DLL you use that raildriver uses to talk to the game, but it's more of an external hardware DLL. But there's all sorts of fun stuff in there. So. Um, <coughs> Um, so that's Oops. good fun. Uh, in TSW, how crazy is the simulation in terms of the engines? Obviously, the 52 is diesel hydraulic. Did any elements of the drive system affect the design of the in-game mod, or is it largely not affected by traction technique? Oh, it's entirely affected by traction technique. Go and have a look at the simigraph diagrams for all of the loco throttle part. I need to get the Class 52 simigraph diagram visible, actually. I'll try and get that one um, drawn up um, and uh, put up onto a studio update. Um, so... Uh, Yes, um, but yeah, the, there's absolutely the, whether or not the, the, the traction type is very much modelled. So the Simigraph has the fluid couplings, torque converters, got the engine, fuel tank. It's it does not have generators. It doesn't have traction motors. It's really quite different. So look at where we are now, Matt. We are Mannheim we Karlsruhe. Mannheim Karlsruhe, excellent. And um, this route was released in uh, on the 19th of March 2015. So um, we're going to give you a glimpse on the ICE3 right now. Again, nothing extraordinary, just roughly about maybe 5-10 minutes. Um, but what I do like about this route is the detail in here. And um, the fact that the ICE3 as well is just probably one of my favorite. Mm, the ICE3 is good yeah. fun. It's it's brilliant and the it's quite a lot of action on this route, isn't it? There's yeah. a lot of action here, definitely, and um, definitely something for um, people to explore. It's um, I think features a, quite a variety of drivable um, uh, rolling stock as well, doesn't it? So um, yeah, we are going to speed up a little bit, but not by much. I think everything is fine. We should be able to move on quite quickly. But yeah, this is one. This is a fast route as well. This, yeah. this one runs up the full speed of the ICE, from yeah. what I remember. Yeah. And quite recent as well, which means that there's a lot of detail in it. How's Chad doing today? Just having a look. Uh, why is TSW not backwards compatible, even if it was a purely graphical and performance thing? So, uh, Simigraph is entirely different. There is no compatibility between the two. The way the 3D models are made. Uh, and brought into the game is entirely different. Um, and if you, the minute you want any kind of backwards compatibility, what you're saying is you're holding back the new generation from what it can do. Uh, back, whereas if you say, if you chop the cord, um, 
the, um, then all of a sudden you can do so much more and you can think about things in a different way. And that was kind of key for TSW because TS19 doesn't go anywhere. It's still a great product. It's still out there. You can still drive it. So you don't, it's not like you're forced to stop using TS19 therefore you want to bring your collection with you you can carry on using it in TS19 so it's about how do we build a collection how do you build a simulator that can do so much more if you thought about it differently all the dispatcher is different a completely different way of doing it the way we build routes is completely different our signaling is fundamentally different so it really is um, a very different uh, a very different way of doing things. So the, the backward compatibility is completely off the table for that one. And that was a design decision. Uh, will TS64 bit ever get multi-threading or performance enhancements? Um, I can't speak to the future. Um, I mean, TS2019 TS, TS is multi-threaded. Um, it's not as multi-threaded as it should be, but around TS2012, I think, it received a f uh, its first major chunk mm. of uh, multi-threading support. Um, but um, it's, it's not as multi-threaded as it should be. It's still fairly heavily on the game thread, um, but it does do some stuff um, afterwards. Evening, Amari Leon. Hey, Amma. Uh, Locomo, can you please say about the German diesel loco for MSB and RSN, the big areas where you need it, are there any problems? The biggest problem with any kind of add-on at all, to be honest, is getting access to it. You know, mm. the level of um, detail we're making for TSW means we need to be getting in two locos, climbing over them, getting the manual for them and learning all about them. And uh, that means until we can get right ac up that, that level of access, making one is difficult or it's compromised. Um, so an access, getting access to some of the German trains has been quite challenging. So, um, but uh, we're definitely aware and really want to fill that need. So uh, leave it with us. We will get it to you as soon as we can. Well, that would be a pretty good addition. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we added the sidings to Raw's Eag that have, like, up to the power plant and so forth. We didn't cut it off there because, like, at some point we will have the diesel. Let's make sure that the gameplay, the, the route is supporting mm. it. The same is true for Schaffenberg. I know people have asked me, well, if you had no diesel in the pack, why did you make the docks? Well, it's because at some point we will yep. put a diesel. Uh, you already have the route ready for that diesel to get there. So it's already something that you can do. So it's more a case of get it there before you mm. can... Uh, before you can use it because sometimes we because the roots are big that in making them bigger is a much more uh, changing a route is much difficult much more difficult later on so get us get the route think about what we want to do it across you know an extended period what other trains we want, and then extend and make a route as far as we can that sort of copes with some of that stuff there's already Dutch DLC called Plopper Mal it's, it's the Zacken's wagon you, you, you know that <laughs> We made it NL specifically for you, Cop Plopper Mel. <laughs> We're going here pretty fast, aren't we? 180 kilometers now. Yep. Yeah. Through the beautiful tunnel where we can see everything, and I again forgot headlights, but that's fine. Oh, no, I didn't. How hard is it to obtain licenses? It very much varies. Uh, because as much as everybody on this channel and on this chat is saying, hey, train sim, we, understand, we know train sim, it's cool, it's all part of our world. Um, a lot of the railway companies, they're not paying attention to video games, they're busy running a railway. And therefore, you know, here they get this message through from um, someone saying, hey, we want to make a game featuring your trains. They sort of look at it a bit funny-eyed and say, a game? That's not really a right priority hmm. for us. And so it's trying to you know, get through that. And some train companies, <coughs> like Amtrak particularly, for example, have been fantastic. They really got it. They're really excited to be, you know, to be involved. Other companies, they've got other priorities, and it, they don't quite understand it. And um, um, you know, that, that's where things get a bit more difficult. So it's, um, it's, it's very different. There's no black and white to that. It's, very, just, it's just very difficult. We've got a team that look after sourcing licenses and going out and they'll go out and talk to train companies and uh, operators and uh, you know, they're dedicated to doing that stuff. So, yep. 
long process. It's, it's, it's not easy. It takes a lot of time and effort from many parties to get those licenses. So it's definitely not easy. We're going so fast. So fast. I think we're going to climb to 250 and probably going to stop our um, at this scenario and move on to our next route, which is which is quite exciting, back in our home country. The limit is to 80 now. Wow, this is fast, isn't it? I'm just having a quick over and look over at the uh, the Steam chat, actually. That's why I'm looking over here, because we've got yeah. another computer over here that's got the Steam on it, just to... Uh, uh, yeah, for everyone, by the way, for everyone who doesn't know who we are, who, are watching from, who, are, who is watching from Steam, um, you're all 1,600 of you, welcome. All 1,600 of you. Um, we are Dovetail Game developers of Train Simulator and um, Train Sim World. So we are celebrating our 10-year anniversary this year. Um, this month, actually, in June, uh, specifically on the 12th of June. But um, we already kick-started our celebrations. Um, we're going to have lots of various um, events for you. So first of all, obviously, the stream today. And we're going to have a stream on the 12th of June. We're going to have a lot of fun, really. Thank you very much, Matt. But um, I think we've reached the speed we wanted to reach. And we're going to actually exit now. Although I really want to keep going. But um, we are going to stop. So, um, yeah. So we are developing both Train Simulator and Train Simulator World. They're slightly different games, um, quite a bit different, but um, the main point of them is that they're related to trains, and Train Sim World is developed on a um, Unreal Engine, while um, Train Simulator 19 uses a different engine. Yep. And um, we are very happy because we're basically 10 years in, and it's a long process. I've only joined recently, but um, there are people who have been here for a long time. You're mad, you mad yourself have how long? You've been seven years, wasn't it? I just got my seven year badge. Seven years, yeah. So it's yeah. a very long, very long time. Um, basically, the purpose of this particular um, stream, sorry, is to sh show you the content, how it really evolved from today, uh, from from when we started to today. So um, we started with the Chatham main, Chatham main and Medway. Sorry, I'm. I'm I'm losing a little bit. Chatham, Maine, and Medway Valley lines, yep. and going back all the way to 2009, um, which the route you will see, which route is going to be. But um, we want to show you how the game really evolved in all that time, mm -hmm. and we're very happy. So now we are going to drive one of the favorite, one of the favorite um, vehicles. Of, but of our community, it is called, well you will see in a second, uh, it will be again five, five maybe ten minutes, uh, min minutes long uh, scenario, so n nothing extraordinary, but um, you, everyone likes what we're going to show you. No, uh, keep talking about it, I'm a bit losing my tongue. That's right, um, MDH Games, please move over a stream, check out build groups in the editor, definitely want to be doing that one, just going to wait a little bit longer um, and get a bit closer to a release date. Uh, so that we can then, uh, and it's probably more of a series of streams to be honest, because making uh, showing off the editor is going to take quite a while. Um, so, and I'm going to try and get some of the editor, the creating t the development team to come and help me, because otherwise, seriously, watching me make a route is going to be hilarious. Um, the uh, what have we got here now? Uh, someone asked a question about why have older DLCs been removed from Steam Store even if the detail is lower? Some may be wanted. So there's a number of reasons. It's generally not because the detail of anything to do with the detail level. Oh, look at that! Pay so hype. Um, excuse me. Um, the uh, there are a number of reasons. Uh, one is down to incompatibility. Um, so as the game has developed, it may be found that. Um, so a key thing, for example, is when the tra game transitioned to TS 2013, um, the original core routes from Railworks were taken out. So the um, uh, Raw Zieg, Nor uh, the Raw Zieg line, the Hagen Zieg line, the um, London to Reading line, uh, London Oxford line, all of those routes were taken out. And what happened was we we'd found that some of the content that had been made, not very much, but some, actually no longer worked if you didn't own those things. They depended on files in there. And it was fine for existing users, but if you were a brand new user and bought TS 2013, then if you bought some of these items, they just wouldn't work. And it wasn't practical to fix them, so it was just a case of, well, they'll have some of them got fixed, and, and some of the ones that were <coughs> less popular, they just went away. Um, and sometimes what happened is that they then were fixed up as part of other projects. Um, and uh, and then included in different DLCs as along with other upgrades. 
Um, so um, so that, that's kind of where it is. Uh, and the other reason sometimes is, for example, if it's a third party product and the third party uh, just simply requests that it be removed for one reason or another. Another one is if we found, um, if, it's, if it comes to light that there are um, issues with the product, um, particularly if it's a third party one and there are no fixes, um, then it's, it's taken off until we can get the fixes mm -hmm. through from the third party developer. Just to make it uh, tell everyone which route this is, so we're going back to 20th of February 2014. This is Riviera Line, Exeter, is it Pinkton? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not entirely sure. Is it yeah. Pinkton? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're looking at 143 Pesa, which everyone absolutely loves. Uh, this route is particularly gorgeous. As you it know, it's got one of the most scenic areas where you go down Dawlish coastline. Um, and uh, yeah, that's very well known and really, really. To be fair, I could have just dedicated the whole stream playing this. So. <laughs> and many of these routes, to be fair, there's yep. some really, really iconic locations, exactly. really fun places to drive trains, good experiences. This is a really nice selection, actually. Thank you. We're back in the UK. Will we see animated cars on other routes in TSW? Um, future routes should all have the animated cars um, prior, prior routes. Um, certainly that's the aspiration, but I can't make any promises as to when. How are we doing everyone? This is another pacer and um, we can go quite fast here. What's the maximum speed of the pacer actually? Can they I mean pretty to... much the minute you're moving you're probably going too fast. <laughs> But fair enough. Fair enough. If you look up, normally the speed, your maximum speed is shown on the uh, on the screen there. Here you go. Oh right. yeah. Maximum 75. speed. Seventy five. Seventy five. What a what, what a thrill ride. They could charge theme park prices to ride on that. Yeah, you'll probably get deaf by by the, by the <laughs> time um, it reaches that speed. Do you guys have this route, and uh, or if you have any of the routes that we've played previously, let us know. But um, something that we'll get to into in the next 45 minutes. Probably not that many of you have, and um, some probably do, but um, it's not a very well-known place. JP says 75, 75 and a pacer is certainly white knuckle. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's got to be experienced, doesn't it? <laughs> live, live life. Please add this route to TSW. I would love to get this route into TSW, Mikey. One of my key personal um, things that I want to achieve before we look at putting this into TSW is getting that Dawlish coastline just absolutely spot mm. on, including the sea, um, because um, it's. Oh uh, no! Did someone I, I, I forgot to stop. I think so. Uh, anyway, we'll move on to Dead the next. Um, yeah, it happens. It happens sometimes, guys. I mean, every train driver's career, you have these moments when something just goes badly wrong it so um, that's totally fine it happens you know, yeah can we switch to my <laughs> face again and um, press f everyone um anyway we are moving on and um we while matt is entertaining our audience i'm gonna try and load in our next scenario but the tsw how is the csx upgrades um yeah they're just finishing up in qa at the moment shadow um i'm hoping it won't be too much longer now Yeah, slowly getting there. We're halfway through our stream and our selection of scenarios. Yeah, keep 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 effing guys. Keep 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 doing that. Yeah, I've never done it. I've never missed any stations on stream. I think that's <laughs> that's a terrible, terrible thing. <laughs> Any hope of a new big boy or a new route for it? Um, so actually on last week's stream, um, we had the uh, the great honor of um, talking with uh, Mike Rennie from Smokebox, who mm -hmm. did the FEF, um, and more recently some of the uh, historic um, trains, uh, and we had a look at his Promontory Summit stuff. Um, but he did announce actually on the stream uh, his intention to make a new big boy, uh, which is Yep. Really exciting. <coughs> you imagine the locomotive of the quality of the FEF3 uh, being the big boy. That's just going to be, it's going to be a while. It's not a five minute job. It's going to be a while. The FEF3 took about two years, I think, to make. Um, and I, I imagine the big boy possibly be less than that because obviously uh, Mike has, you know, he's learned a lot of new things since then. But 
I'd rather he took his time and just did an amazing job on it. So yep. really hyped, really looking forward to it. Um, and if you guys want to know how amazing Steam trains are made for Train Simulator 19, go back, um, go to our YouTube or Twitch and watch a replay from a week ago um, where we had Mike on our stream and he goes into detail. I mean, it's almost two hours of talking about how to make steam trains basically so make sure you go there and uh, you will absolutely enjoy it as uh, you will enjoy it as much as we did so yeah we're moving on to our next route so this is Hamburg to, to Hanover and we're on the ICE again or ICE um, depends on ICE Intercity yeah. Express yeah um, so but this is IC2 if I'm not mistaken so it's um, it's a little bit different one isn't it oh uh, yes so yeah we're we're, we're not gonna spent too much time here but I just wanted to show you the beautiful scenery on this fantastic route oh. <laughs> scary face um, yeah so um, this is the part I really like like how you're moving on and you see this beautiful station in Hamburg so with, with, with some with some fantastic um, textures and just looks so detailed and, and massive and um, you really feel like you're almost there and the route is quite big as well there's a huge variety of um, options for you you can do um, passenger freight um, shunting there's every everything you really may want if you're a germany fan um, in train similar 19 so this is brilliant route and we're absolutely enjoying it as well like we do with almost or not almost but every route that we have in our games we're gonna give it a little bit of a go baked bean says this is the uh, first train he ever drove on TS was this train on this route there's a metronome coming in mm-hmm I think we've done a DLC during the industrial war periods um, that they're very tricky Adrian partly because of the war element um, and if you're going to introduce the sort of the real the challenge and uh, of, of war then you kind of need to bring explosions and things and we're not really about that um, and um, then you've also got the, the, this, the challenge of trying to model um, something like that it would be really really difficult to model um, so it's it, it's, it, it becomes difficult on many, many levels, but I think it's probably be an interesting community project if people are really interested in that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you guys are from Hamburg or you've, if you've been there, let us know. We really want to hear from you. We might even... No, never mind. Uh, Rob J, considering an SSD for your PS4 Slim, in your opinion, would it increase frame rate? Not tested it. Um, on the PC, an SSD increase, in, uh, decreases, sorry, decreases load times. Um, but it doesn't really increase the frame rate. TS19 benefits massively from an SSD. Um, TS World um, benefits a little bit. Um, I don't know whether it justifies the cost of it on, on, a, on a PlayStation, but um, it's, uh, it won't hurt performance. Whether or not you get the benefit for it, I don't know. TSW doesn't really have the disk access levels that TS1 does. Yes, I heard about Big Boy having its uh, its little derailment um, <coughs> yesterday on its way home. Did it? Yeah. Two, oh no! Two of the drivers came off. Really? So yeah, that's all right. These things well, happen. Okay. Well, as long as it's it's, it's fine. all it's all good. I think she's back on the road now. Okay. What are you, you going to do with it now? I think it's just going to go to a museum or... No, 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 sure? it'll go back. It'll get maintained because it's obviously just done a lot of miles. Yeah. Um, and then it's going out on preserved uh, runs, I think. Oh, really? Correct me if I'm wrong, folks. Is uh, I think its next job, or probably one of its next jobs, is the um, the one that passing, paying passengers are going to be on at $3,500 a seat. By the way, Ma Matt, um, what is happening tomorrow? It's quite an important day, isn't it, for British Railway? Do you know? It's the last day of uh, very oh, famous... Oh, last chest of eight loads. Is this the HSTs on Paddington? Yeah. Yes. You, yes any chance you're going there? Oh, uh, no. Mm. <laughs> as exciting as that is, it's uh, and it's a big show. I love the HSTs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, it's fully booked. There is no way to get in there anyway. So, yeah. But it's the end of era, isn't it? You can still go to any... Or to Train Sim Weather 19, for example, and check it yourself. And Train Sim World. And Train Sim World. And London Paddington to Reading. All right, we're a bit speeding, but that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, uh, what's a bit speeding between friends, eh? <laughs> Minus 135. That 
It's a stunning route. I really like this one. HST, the most successful temporary solution in railway history. Pacer probably counts as a as probably the second most, I would have thought, because I'm sure, remember rightly, the Pacer was a kind of a uh, a temporary solution to sort of get Leyland uh, in the uh, in the business, and uh, they've been around now for 40 or 50 years. Mm. Right, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We're moving on to the next one. Now we're getting to a little bit more interesting. So we're going back to 2012 with uh, with our next route, the one you've already guessed. So oh, we're still in this menu. Um, we are going back to 2012. Um, London to Brighton is where we're going to be playing next. So we're going to get this one running in a few moments. Big Bean Kid, the biggest thing to be done in TS Simulator, wartime conditions, take away the lights at night, model the canvas covers. Basically, turn your monitor off. <laughs> <laughs> and, I get what you mean, Big Bean Kid, totally get what you mean. And uh, I saw a documentary, um, I think with Pete Waterman, where he was talking about some of the conditions. And it was amazing. It was it was amazing. You know, they were driving, you're riding down, uh, driving the train down the line. You've got the covers over the top. Um, the windows are shut. You're creating as little steam as you can get away with, and you're looking at the, the, the sort of that front window. You're in a sauna because the heat can't escape um, because you've got all the covers up, and you're trying to trying to identify where you are at the middle of the night where these um, signals are. All the while, you're constantly worried that someone will you'll get spotted um, and strafed. It, it was it's you know it was a really interesting documentary, but. Oh, there we go. We're on. Uh, where is the best place to learn how to make a passenger scenario? I wouldn't know about the best place. I've put some videos on scenario creation on my YouTube channel, and I think you'll find if you look all on YouTube, there's probably a bunch of other people who have um, who have created scenario tutorials as well. So I would just do a Google on uh, a Google, do a search on YouTube, <laughs> Mikey Far, and uh, see what comes up. And if anybody else in the viewers have got recommendations, please feel free to pass them on. I right. love this route. Right. This route is so nice. Yes. And beautiful cinematical as well. Yeah. Very, very um, intriguing. And by the way, everyone who is saying congratulations, we I think we've missed a couple of those messages. Thank you very much. We Thank really you very appreciate much it. We are very happy that you are with us. Oh, wow. this is um, this is great. Just have a look. Well, sure I'm not missing anything else. Uh, Martin, I know you're on Steam. If questions get asked, I'm missing a thing because I'm stuff. If, if anything gets asked that you think we should be responding to, uh, could you pop it into the uh, one of the other channels that we're on as well? And I can uh, I can make sure that we are answering people from Steam. <coughs> it was up to 1,900 viewers now. 1,900. Welcome, folks, Welcome 1900. folks everyone. Um, if you don't know who we are, we are Dovetail Games, the developer of Train Simulator 19 and Train Sim World. Both games are dedicated to trains and um, they're a bit different experiences. Train Sim World is more about being the driver, being there. It's, um, it's, uh, it's more about just enjoying the various things that being a train driver offers you while is that right? Mm. And the TS-19 is slightly more, um, I suppose, longer routes, just exploring the routes themselves. It's about that. It's a fully on train driving experience. Exactly. TSW is more than just the train driver experience because you can get out of the train, ride trains as passengers. You get more out of the route, essentially. Yes, and welcome. We're very happy that you're on the stream with us. Um, what are we doing on our stream as we are going through um, history of Rules for Train Simulator 19, and we're going backwards, in fact. So we started with um, Chatham, Main and went Medway and um, Valley Lines. We went through um, South Sichuan Pass, Albula Line, Mannheim, Karlsruhe, the, Re the Riviera Line, Hamburg to Hanover, and now we're at London to Brighton, and um, we are still going back and back. So this London to Brighton route was released back in 2012. Let's show you my favorite bit of this train. Yep, sure. Just look up a little bit. On the left-hand side, there. Look down now on the window. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted. I, I, absolutely I, I, my favorite. Come bit on, Matt. I, I, I didn't want to call it out, and, and you, you just do this. <laughs> it's yeah, detailed. Well, it I makes mean, it look real. It? That, that's UK. For you, you can also <laughs> click on the fan as well. You can you can turn the fan on because that's it's the switch underneath it. Oh okay. Uh, and you can turn the fan on. There you go. Look. Boom. We have a working Ooh. fan, folks. <laughs> Matt made it himself. <laughs> Cheers, Beck Bean Kid. <laughs> oh. um, 
Uh, Captain Pablo from Steam, are you going to do a Waterloo Windsor Riverside add on? Um, future projects, um, I'm afraid that comes under. If there's anything that we do on that front, if it happens, then. Uh, well, you know, we're always looking at new ideas and uh, and so forth. So you can do um, you can do a lot with uh, coming out of Waterloo at the moment. Waterloo out to um, Weymouth on the Portsmouth direct line um, has been modelled in Train Sim Twenty Nineteen. Mm. If you guys played London to Brighton, if you're enjoying it, um, please do let us know. It's one of our favourites. Gatwick, Gatwick, I'm gonna be soon going to Gatwick. Is there a, is the chat fine? Mm. Not nothing, nothing yeah, with the chat. No, yeah, we, we did have a couple of videos with our restream in the past. I think previous uh, the stream, the one before last one, um, but I think we fixed that, so everything is going fine. If there are any issues with the uh, with the sound, please do let us know. What, 1500 hours in London to Brighton? That's nice amazing. One, Mikey. Can we just scroll up and look at the desktop audio? Cause, um, desktop audio, yeah, sure, we can. On. Yep, there's definitely the game yeah, audio yeah. coming through. Yep. Just, just, yeah. Oh, Minecraft, by the way. Yeah, Absolutely 10 years happy. on Minecraft. Uh, I can't believe 10 years, Minecraft. I remember it's when. It's been around a long time. I can't believe. Time flies. I still like playing Minecraft. Do you? It's good fun. I used to play when I was younger, but... You never grow out of Minecraft. Fair enough, fair enough, but, yeah. It's a great game. What happens is you just play more train sim. Uh, pretty much, yeah. All right, guys. We showed you London to Brighton. We, unfortunately, we would love to keep playing, Whistle but stop we have to move on. Routes. And um, now we're getting to something very interesting. We're going to play um, a pretty old route now, but um, it this route has recently received a new loco. I think you will might be able to recognize what it is. Not recently, actually, just two days ago. It's very recent. So um, the it is the Horseshoe Curve, <coughs> released on the 21st of September 2011. And the new loco is called. What is it called? It's sharp nose, isn't it? Six. The ER six. BR six. BR six. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm out of touch with it. And you will, you will, you will find this. Oh, that's not exactly what I was looking for. Um, you will find this loco quite interesting when we actually find it. <clears throat> yeah, Horseshoe Curve actually came out um, as part of Train Simulator 2012, mm -hmm. um, and it was quite a major step forward. The whole of Train Simulator 2012 actually brought the whole product forward in a big way, um, because it introduced super elevation, it allowed for, it was actually the first time you could do proper long American freight trains, for example, um, and um, yeah, DR6. DR6. Um, it had rain on the windows. It was this is this was actually the time all of these things that we take for granted now in in the, in the train simulator. It was on this route on TS twenty twelve. This was <coughs> when they first arrived. You'd like to see Torshu Curve and TSW. I am right with you, Derek. I am right with you. Although for me, I guess I'm torn because as much as I really like the Pennsylvania, I kind of want to see some black and white traction. That was fast. Right, so probably one of the main features of this loco, um, at least all from the very first time that you see it, is that it's absolutely massive. Just look at that. This is very similar. This this loco is very similar to another one called an RF-16 Sharp Nose. This is the passenger version of it, I think. Remember rightly, the RF-16 is a freight loco. This is the passenger um, sort of express deluxe version uh, of that locomotive. And yeah, this pack also comes with the um, this this lovely um, coaching stock as well. Oh let's, God! Let's, oh, come let's on. Let's try that again. Yeah, well, let's try again. <laughs> hit replay. Sort of moving. Sorry, guys. Yep. So for oh my God, there is a Here come the fails. Here come uh, the fails. <laughs> 
Don't be shy with the veils, folks. <laughs> yep, so this is a very new um very new oven. Just came out two days ago. It's is it quite unusual to get um new passenger view. Yeah, there's a variety of passengers views on this one. You can find a lot of stuff. So, what are you? What, is there anything you're looking for particularly? No, so no, no. I've not actually had a look at this one yet, and I know that um, DTM, uh, who made this um, pack, um, really go to town on adding lots of different passenger views in the coaches. Yes, sets. exactly. There's a, a lot of them. Oh, can I get a, a click? Oh, sorry. Is this loco related in any way to the centipede? It's for the same people, it's Baldwin, if I remember rightly. Um, it's related in that way, because uh, the Baldwin was uh, sent, the centipede was a Baldwin as well, I think. Yeah, but I'm gonna try and get to the horseshoe itself, actually, on this one, um, as soon as we start moving properly. I might bring it to this, just so that we will be able to move on. Oh, we're, okay, we're rolling back. Bit more Let's get, yeah, a bit more. Bit more a bit more. You're on a great, yeah. yeah. But we are gonna get to that whole shoe for sure. I just wanna see it. It's so, it looks so beautiful in real life. Mm. There we go. There we go. Chris, mm. Chris, if you keep up, I'm, I'm gonna be letting Jill know. Goodbye. Just, just letting you know. Goodbye, just, Mr. Jackson. I'll miss you. Outrageous behaviour on the chat, Chris. <laughs> I do like this route. This is this this route is so uh, iconic. There's a beautiful, really, really amazing section of scenarios um, on Steam Workshop by uh, by. There's a number of a lot of scenarios actually on this on Steam Workshop for this route. It, it just really captures people's imagination. But the what some of my favourite ones are by an author called Steve Van Epps. Um, and uh, you need quite a lot of rolling stock to make these things work, but they're such epic experiences. If anything, they're probably super real. They're hyper real experiences because there's so many trains running, but the number of times that you'll have four train, big freight trains on the screen and you'll be following, you you will be following one and there'll be two following each other going the other way. Um, <laughs> thanks, Chris. <coughs> oh, you're already there, Jill. Excellent. Um, <coughs> you'll keep him in check. <laughs> hmm. um, so, um, but yeah, if, so if you've got this um, uh, this route and you've got some of the other various American packs, I, w I would definitely um, say that I've enjoyed Steve Van Epp's scenario. So uh, go ahead and uh, take a look and download those. They're on Steam Workshop. Yeah, we're going to take some time. We're not, we're not hurrying now. We've got um, this and two more um, routes left. So we've got plenty of time just. We're going to arrive according to our schedule. It's a very old route as well, 2011. It's one of the earliest, isn't it? I think Dovetail Games was quite small at the time, wasn't it? Yeah, but this was Railworks. 2012 was technically Railworks 3. And was actually the first time we started calling it Train Simulator 20 something or other. Yep. This was the first build that got that name. Prior to that was Railworks 2 and Railworks, and just Railworks. Uh, how do you spell it? Steve. Uh, v A N space EPS E P P S if I remember rightly. I just wanted to show you around a little bit. We're going very steadily. There's a lot of passengers that we're carrying, so we have no need to hurry. There's plenty of rolling stock for this route. There's uh, the Pennsylvania K four steam locomotive. There's um, there's other trains like the Baldwin Centipede was mentioned earlier on. There's the RF14 Shark Nose. Um, there's um, there's there's the, I think there's um, Virtual Railroads actually a German developer in a major departure to what they normally make. They actually made an Alco um, I think it was an Alco um, Bobo um, truck unit. I can't remember what it was now. Mm. RS11 I think it was something like that. So they, they've done all sorts of, uh, there's, there's all sorts of packs available and all in, in keeping. There's, oh, actually, DTM did their um, GE44 tonner 
um, which you can get on this route in Pennsylvania livery. So there's huge variety to, uh, to build up your uh, Pennsylvania stock. Oh, we're in the toilet. Amazing views. Working toilet? No, yeah. no, it doesn't exist. Toilets don't exist. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, look at that one. It's a GP. GP. GP9. Yep. We're going to try and get to the horseshoe for sure. Got to listen to the horn. Loud. Yep, how are you guys getting on? If you are um, watching us are on Steam and don't really know who we are, I'm going to repeat us again. So we are um, Doctor Games, we are developers of Train Simulator, and, uh, Train Simulator 19 and Train Sim World. Today we are looking at our um, at Train, Sim, uh, Train Simulator 19, which is celebrating its 10 years anniversary this month. Um, we are extremely happy about that, you know. 10 year anniversaries do not happen very often and um, we have a whole month of various community activities going on so we're kicking off with uh, with this stream we have we're gonna have stream later in june we're gonna have um okay i'll give it uh, this information out we're gonna have a small giveaway soon and um, we have a sale and um, that's going on right now on steam which is the reason why you're watching really um, we um, probably the biggest sale uh, right now and uh, just in case I'm sitting. I'm I'm a, just a mere peasant, but I'm sitting with one of the most important thing uh, people in the in the uh, in the what? company. Um, yeah. So um, you you are very your everyone is very welcome. We're very happy to to have you on our stream and see so many people um, watch us playing trains, doing our favorite thing in life. Captain Pablo, how do you get your rail driver to work in Windows 10 on TS19? If it doesn't just work out the box, pretty much Captain Pablo using PI engineering software, then what I suggest you do is give them a um, give PI engineering a um, a shout on their support. They're a great bunch, and I'm sure they will help you get that working. Certainly should work. Yes, if you, if, if you guys if you're new if you have questions about train simulator in general, just ask away because. Um, we have Matt, who is absolutely expert, and he can answer any questions about train simulators. I can expertly dodge many questions. Yes, that works. That works. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a particular skill. It's not. It's not uh, have any game level. accessory manufacturers shown interest in creating a specific TSW controller? There's been a number of people over the years that we've spoken to that have shown an interest, or they've been in sort of casually interested in what the hard what the hardware might look like. Um, but um, I've not seen anything come to fruition mm. yet. But there's an awful lot of hardware out there already that you can repurpose um, to some degree, but you kind of have to you know, get your own programming toolkit out and use them. Um, so uh, there'll be uh, plenty to come. There is, there is the horseshoe. And um, we're not that far. We're relatively not that far. Do you think we should get there? Yeah, or, let's yeah. just keep going till we get just there. Just keep going, yeah. The horseshoe curve is an iconic part of this route. Yeah. Won't take us long now. Put a bit more, so I knew on maximum three, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it's a power machine to carry around with all, with, with so many yeah, rounds. Yeah, enough for 2% grade as well. Yeah. Yeah, guys, so, um, yeah, if you've just joined, we are going through the history of um, all routes in, well, not all routes, obviously, because there are so many, but we're going from, we went from the most modern, uh, one of the most modern routes, which is Chatham, Maine, um, and Medway Line, and now we're going backwards. So um, we're at the fir third um, from the end, basically. So we're in 2011, and the next two will be 2010 and 2009, and everything will culminate in 2009 with the very, the earliest train similar route that is currently available on Steam. Um, it's, it will be pretty interesting to see, and we're hoping you will stay with us till the end. Um, on uh, Steam, Banger uh, MS UK says, what's the best stopping distance before stations you keep overrunning or stopping off platform? So if I am running a route for the very first time and I've got no idea and I'm running a loco for the first time, what I generally use as a guidance, because it will always understop me, is I go at one kilometre. Um, and then what I do is, or I'll try and speed to the level of the distance. So for example, if I'm 
0.67 away, do more and more than 67 miles an hour. If I'm 0 0.30, do no more than 30 miles an hour. If you slow down at that rate, you'll come in slowly, but you'll always come in and you'll be doing one mile an hour at 0.01. Mm. And so you'll always come in and stop. And then what you'll do is you can then, you'll realize how much slower you come in. And then you can say, well, actually, I can do double that. So maybe at um, 0.15, I should be doing 30 miles an hour or something like that. So you can then you can then learn to tune that as you're, as you're coming into a station. Um, and then what you really want to be doing, if you want to start learning the way that they uh, they do it in real world, is start picking points. Um, as you're coming along, you'll get a landmark. So it might be this gantry, for example, or um, you see a particular that when you come across the start of a set of um, caravans in the scenery, um, you'll um, you'll say, right now, is, this is my breaking point. Is what they is what they call it. And then you'll put your brakes on. Because really, what you want to do is come in nice and efficiently, kind nice and quite quickly and know the right point to put a, a proper brake application on, slow down at a comfortable rate, and pretty much stop. I mean, the mark of a, of a pro driver with a lot of experience is one brake application, it comes in, it stops, and it's at the right point every time. That takes tremendous practice and experience. And it does make, once you've tried this in the game a few times, you, you start to get a real appreciation mm. for just how much skill the driver yep. that drove you to... Uh, to, um, to work today had because he stopped pretty much on the same mark every time and they aren't hanging around um, so it's um, it's really interesting to, um, to to try and practice that but no as a general guideline if I'm driving a completely for uh, alien route to me that I've never done before a train that I don't know how fast it will slow down then that's my full my, my fallback solution because then I can keep an eye on it any passenger views on the Broadway, Adam? Yeah, loads of them. Um, have another quick run through the passenger views. Sure, Dimitri. absolutely, of course. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of passenger views. So. so yeah, this is one of them. What's the button for cycling between those? Do you remember? I don't think you can. Really use a button. Yeah. It's got to be done with the HUD. <coughs> so this is restroom. This is a nice launch. Oh, it's a restaurant, right? So this is this is beautiful, isn't it? Oh, okay, we're speeding up a little bit, so I'm, I have to slow down. I'm sorry. I'm gonna slow down <laughs> by being in a in a in a restaurant wagon. Is that what you call it? Restaurant wagon or a dining car? Dining, probably. dining car. Yeah. Fair enough. Do we call it a little bit differently in our language? But we are, should be approaching the. Right now, I think we should yeah, be on it as well. Yeah, yeah, curve. yeah. We're on it already. Yeah. yeah, this is the horseshoe curve. Ooh. Kind of missed this a little bit, but it's fine. I'm just gonna try and give you a slightly better view. This is a brand new logo, guys. Just, just to let you know, brand new. Only came out two days ago. You have no words, I think, my dear. Oh, it's beautiful. Lost for words. I like the old stuff. Um, it's, it's, you know, it, it's. I find it's got a lot of character. In fact, one of one of the interesting traits of the Baldwin locomotives versus um, the, and it's actually one of the things that, as I understand, it caused a lot of problem for them and why they don't make them anymore, why they're not around, is because. Baldwin were a, a major steam locomotive uh, manufacturer and when they started making diesel locos they made them the same way they make steam locos that is to say every one effectively was a custom build so mm. what it became it became an issue that while you had two locos that looked very similar replacing them with spare parts and things became very much more tricky because they weren't quite the same and every loco was a unique uh, had unique um, traits Whereas the lower, the companies that succeeded, so General Electric, um, Alco, or EMD, um, got to mass producing their locos. So they'd make, you know, 300 of a loco and they'd mass produce so that all of the locos were identical. Um, whereas Baldwin, as I said, they, they seemed to go down, they were, they were using the same uh, manufacturing process and construction process they used for steam engines, which meant that they couldn't quite scale to the level that um, were needed as the okay. sort of railways evolved. Yes. That's interesting. Okay, guys, we're done with those two, with um, with horseshoe, and uh, now we're approaching to some very interesting. I'm actually going to prepare the uh, this little bit text for you, Matt, because even the way our Steam page was done um, in that time is quite interesting. It's uh, it's very brief. Let's put it this way. So here, a sheet of paper for you, just in case. 
And um, we are going back to 2010. 2010, yeah. Where is the... We're heading back in time into Railworks and exactly Railworks 2 territory. 19 of March 2010. This is roughly when I came, finished high school and came to this country, basically. So You're not allowed so to make me feel old on this I, I, I have a lot of memories associated with 2010, unfortunately. <laughs> it, it gives me a lot of nostalgic feelings. But, yeah. So the route is called Fort Kent to Eagle Lake. I'm not seeing any more chat uh -huh. messages come up, which is a little bit concerning. It's not complaining. Yeah, nothing, nothing in, nothing in, um, in two minutes. I'm sure it's going to be fine. We're just, just going to restart the chat. Restart part. the so restart. If I've missed guys, anything, I sorry do apologize. For it. Yeah, but we absolutely hope that you can still hear us. That's the most important thing. Yeah, we're back. Test, test, test. Yeah, good. We have a test here. from EC. Uh, so, RHDR Rail Fan bought Rail Works 2. Excellent. This is this route is not accessible through your normal career um, tab. I think it needs to be uh, accessed through the standard tab, which is a little bit unusual. Actually. So in the early days, um, all in fact by the time but for this route, career mode, I don't think even existed. Okay. Uh, when this mode was because I think it was Railworks Two that career mode first came in, and even then, it wasn't until I think. Possibly Train Simulator 2013 that actually all routes coming with career scenarios became the de facto standard. Yeah. So that's why you'll find some of the earlier routes um, have a uh, have a problem. So the game just crashed. So then fine, we'll be there. It's, okay, it's, it's all good. Um, so um, yeah, this is as you get back. So you, you'll find the content in different places and. Uh, some, some, I think there are even a couple of routes on Steam, so a couple of the older ones where the, there are no scenarios, it's actually all free roams. Mm. So make sure you look in all, if you buy some of the older content, make sure you look in all the tabs. Do you much remember what was the first Railworks scenario, that, or scenario route, I suppose, that you played, or maybe even... The first thing I did um, would have been in Rail Simulator, which would have been uh, driving a Black 5 on the Somerset and Dorset line. Okay. And it was possibly the greatest thing I'd seen. Mm. Um, that would get got you into... Doing that on PC or on computers, or I mean, obviously, previously when you were younger, you were just train spotting, right? Before well, before um, Rail Simulator, I was massively into an nice. earlier product called Microsoft Train Simulator. Yeah, so okay. It Good. was for me. This was like this is like um, going from Microsoft Train Simulator and seeing Rail Simulator and then Rail Works. Yeah, um, was similar to that you know, sort of evolution that we're seeing with Train Sim World as mm. well. So it's it's really interesting seeing that as another another ma you know major shift there. Uh, um, except at this time where MSTS was kind of left to its own devices mm -hmm. and wasn't ever really updated. But TS19 is continually being developed. So you've got two really strong products. It's mm. just it's never been a better time in train simulation. Mm -hmm. Uh, G Cook Scotland, does the FEF have different skill modes? Um, I believe it can be run in like normal a steam engine mode um, in uh, in novice mode um, and then you've got the full-on difficult mode perhaps someone else could just confirm that for me but I seem to remember it has both yeah sorry guys for um, this um, little pause but um, we're getting everything it happens. working will there ever be a DWR class 800 for train simulator who knows what the future holds um, it's difficult to predict um, it's uh, when in, when things happen though, we'll certainly be letting you know. Okay, so can we just quickly read out the Steam description? Absolutely. For this thing? So we're doing Fort Kent. Fort Kent. Yep. Fort Kent. Um, to Eagle Lake. To Eagle Lake. Yes. Uh, let's step back to a simpler time in the United States of America and travel to the eastern seaboard and then northeast to the state of Maine. Even in Maine, we will keep heading north until we reach the central northernmost part of Maine, to just south of the Canadian border. We arrive at two towns separated by 19 miles of track, the Fort Kent and Eagle Lake. This is where all aboard's newest instalment of the railroading experience begins. So, yeah. 20 miles of railroad. Mm -hmm. This is how, where we were back in the uh, back in the day. So here um, we are. Let's look at it from above. So this is 2010. That's actually pretty detailed, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's, this is done by um, someone called Rich Garber. 
and um, he did he did he was you know really talented he did a good job on the uh, routes yeah. that black thing by the way there you're seeing is actually an artifact of one of the things it's an older route yep. um, the graphics engine got quite significantly updated um, and it's the zooming in thing that's it's the way that it handles the lods that's not quite right. working correctly so uh, you just keep the assets off the screen you don't suffer too much and driving experience is absolutely fine but yes, um, so Rich did a number of different routes. In fact, the next one is also by uh, Rich as well. Yeah, ha have you guys heard of this one? Have you heard of it? You probably, many of you have, but um, we're, uh, I, I personally haven't. So it was quite interesting going back and seeing how, how the game looked back in back in the day. Probably in 2010, it was, um, it was actually the best that you could get, right? Uh, set in Maine, but you're driving a UP Loco. Again, back in the days when this route came out, I don't think there was a big selection of locos nope. available. And this route did not come with any brand new stock, if I remember rightly. This used uh, reused stock that was supplied as part of the core product at the time. Um, so, the, um, so yeah, this is all locos and rolling stock that came, if I remember rightly, came with the route itself. Uh, sorry, came with the, um, the other content, like mm. the home pass. There's a lot of detail in here, lots of assets, for sure. Um, I think I've even seen more mopeds in here, and mm -hmm. big tractors, so... There is a lot to see. But yeah, it's still on Steam. That's that's one of the most interesting things. It's still there, it's still available. It's still a really good experience. There's still some, there's a few scenarios been uploaded to Steam Workshop for it, and uh, it's actually, if you bring up the 9 camera, you can see it's actually a really interesting sort of um, shunting experience, switching experience, because that was one of the things that Rich was really good at, was he, he could identify the, um, you know, where there was really good operational interest, and he picked mm. some really interesting um, scenes to, uh, to read. Uh, Do you remember model. playing this back in the day? Oh, well, it wasn't even yeah. that long ago when I last played this, what, this one. It okay. was, uh, I wanted to uh, um, go and have a look at some of the other stuff um, probably a year or so ago, oh, really? and okay. uh, I was playing all these old routes, and um, in, in, you know, going out to some people I know and saying, find me scenarios on these mm. routes, because um, they're still good routes to play. Uh, do you have plans to add hardcore service mode to Trends and World with more red lights and random events? Random events at some point would be good. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say there's a plan as such, but yes, it's on my wish list of things for service mode. Uh, in terms of more red lights, um, I would recommend you have a look at Main Spessart Barn um, because that's probably got one of the richest service modes to date in it. Um, and um, yeah, you can get seriously held up and all sorts of things in that one. So uh, that would be a good way of seeing what's going on. US, US Loco and Asset Pack, that's the one RxDR Rail fan, yeah, that's where the stock comes from. I'm gonna give a try again on the over, overview of um, the route. It's quite long, it's, it's 20 miles, so there's plenty of driving to do here. Just this. disable this thing. Yeah, a lot of detail. And uh, how far we've come with the TS, TSW now. It's really interesting looking back at some of the older routes, um, particularly even the ones that predate Railworks back at like London to uh, Oxford and so forth, uh, and Somerset and Dorset, and just compare between the original release, early releases, and just where TS19 is now. Mm. In fact, if you can find some videos of Railworks 1 versus looking at TS2019, you will be blown away at how different it looks. Um, it's um, particularly because of the TS2012 visual update, but just overall, this HUD didn't exist when Railworks 1 came out. This was a Railworks 2 feature. Um, and so how did you navigate at that time? It was the keyboard, uh, basically just the keyboard. So you honest. basically, do, you don't see anything really? No, for... it was that. Oh, that, okay. that was what you so, had. So there, was was another, there was actually another HUD on the left-hand side, which captured some of that information that we reformatted right. down onto the bottom. But yeah, none of that stuff existed. That was all added as part of Trendsim 2012 and 2013. It got, and got another facelift. Wow. Alright guys, I think we've had enough of this. Um, I would suggest that you actually go and play it. It's still plenty of very nice driving and um, you can get a bit of a time lapse back to, or, or time machine, and go back to 2010. Maybe 
it was a good year for you and um, yeah now we are moving to our very last um, stage um, I never get tired of good years <laughs> we're at very last stage and um, so this is officially the oldest available um, route for Train Simulator 19 on Steam. Mm -hmm. It is the oldest one. It was released on 4th of September 2009. Let me just find it. One of the... Um, there's a couple of routes I do want to give a shout out though that we're not showing at the moment uh, on this stream for a couple of reasons. Well, it's just they won't pick. There's so many routes to pick. Uh, one of them is Isle of Wight. Um, Isle of Wight is a short route based, strangely enough, on the Isle of Wight. And it's um, the uh, it's just it's a lovely route, and it was massively updated a few years back, but actually dates to pre Railworks One, so it's actually older than this route. Like we're ready. We're ready. We uh, to switch over yep. to the game. So, um, can we go straight to the description? Right. So the name of the um, route is Rascal and Cottonwood Route. Right. So All Aboard Rails provides a stunning and fresh new route for Train Simulator. Centered around a fictional North American small town of Tri-City, the Cottonwood Foundry and its Rascal Mine. At roughly 20 miles long, this wonderful, wonderfully designed route includes beautiful and detailed scenery, making for an exciting and immersive experience. So if you go to the nine key, you'll actually see actually one of the things that Rich did quite a lot with some of his earlier routes is they were based on model railway designs. Okay. So that's, it's kind of, it's taking a model railway, scaling it up, and it wasn't actually a model railway, but it was kind of that style of circular operation. Mm. This is how some of the earlier routes created the impression of length yes. without having to create months and months and months of scenery. That's quite interesting. But yeah, this is the officially the oldest route that there is on Steam, and um, we, there are some interesting features of it in here. So, for example, these bushes, they are that's how they look from above. So they are like, cro like cross, cross. I think they're different. This now, is an old technique they? that was used. If you look at the trees, they're the same. Um, and this was an old technique that was used because they weren't high detail trees. The fact that the PCs at the time couldn't cope with them. And this is this dates actually. This this gives you an idea of where we came from because where. Um, train simulation came from because this is how trees in MSTS looked. Um, if you look it down on the ground, it looks fine. Yeah. It's only when you look to take the camera up that you start being able to uh, be able to see what's going on. And the trick worked really well, but it meant with two um, two polys, um, you could model trees and you could put loads of them down without causing massive performance problems. Um, so it was just it was a trick at the time because you got to remember ten years ago PCs were not quite the things that they are today and um, you know there's got to be some compromises to uh, get the visual fidelity just look at that scene it looks great um, where and but yeah. if that scene had been done with today's assets 10 years ago it wouldn't have run on anyone's computer so it was, it was real um, trick to that but it's really cool I mean it's uh, it's it's like a closed circuit so there's quite a lot of um, shunting you have to go here as part of the scenarios that are available um, but it's as Matt said, there is no long route in here. And there's a bit of a problem with the sky as well on this one, isn't it? Yeah, the sky. Something went wrong with the sky again as part of one of the updates. Probably 2012, to be honest, because that was when there were so many changes in TS 2012. But uh, it's still a really good, fun route to uh, yeah uh, to play. It's still available. It's still there. And I think it's even discounted as well. Yeah. Um, and again, you'll find scenarios, I'm sure, on um, Steam Workshop for it as well. Yeah, there is a little bit of um, shunting to do here, so I think we can absolutely do that. So there's the, the other couple of routes that, um, so there's the Isle of Wight, which actually, you know, it was, it was probably route number one. It was probably the first route made um, by, yeah, after the original rail simulator came out. Uh, and it was recently, or not recently, but in the last few years, it was had a major update. So um, that one is well worth a look. It's a beautiful route. It's uh, give you a combination of steam running on the preserved side of the line and then main line running with the, the old 1938 stock underground trains that run down in the Isle of Wight. Mm. Um, and then the other route that uh, is another one that's sort of like it has a special place because it was the first major British route beyond, um, if I remember rightly, beyond um, the ones that were out at the time. And that's the West Coast Main Line North, which was originally developed by um, a third party, Keith Ross. Um, and that one is um, 
Carlisle to Glasgow from Brightly, um, with quite a lot of the area around Glasgow modelled as well. So you're talking, and it was set in, I think, the 80s, so it's class 87, um, and, um, you know, there's all sorts of things mm. going on there. So it's an absolutely... Um, Epic, uh, epic route, and it was it was it was tremendously long. It was beautifully made. I mean, it's it set a new standard, really. It was absolutely amazing um, to see such a thing. To be honest, this whole thing—I don't know if you see where it says reversing point approaching. Yeah, Nobody this... uses reversing points anymore, but they do exist. They they even they hark back from. Um, so uh, when the original rail simulator was made, it was it was built by the same team that made the original Microsoft train simulator. It's not left left path game over in fifty seconds. What if I gone back? And which is another thing which does nobody uses anymore. Now you have to go back. It's there's a setting you can now do to say whether or not you want to uh, um, uh, have that. <laughs> nobody turns it on because it's a bad experience but you know these are the lessons that we learn um, so is that actually going to kick me out yeah, yeah in 20 <laughs> seconds it's going to kick you out because you're off path um, right okay it's only because you went beyond the reversing point once you get back to the reversing point there you go it's cleared oh, oh okay okay so okay great I mean I was afraid that we're, I'm going to have to start again but if you go back, it's... It, Once it, you're back it, on the path, okay. it's all fine. Okay, great. Yeah, it wow, was, this you know, guy it's, is going... As with anything, as you learn, as you, as you, you know, you build a product and people use it and you realise what, what thought was a good idea turns out not to be and other things um, turn out to be a fantastic idea. So it's just, um, you know, it's, it's getting these things out, getting people playing. And this, this, day, this add-on dates back right to the beginning. This is, this is a Railworks 1 era release. Mm. And uh, right back at the beginning, so uh, this, is, I guess, would be the equivalent of sort of like the early route, the sort of the first route coming out for Trains in World in terms of mm. um, the um, the Technology impression. Based. If you compare this to some of the later routes, and that gives you an idea of sort of where TS World would be going in terms of the, the level of advancement over the period of time. You don't even remember reversing points. No, most people even uh, don't even remember them. Ed. Um, I don't even know if the editor will let you place them anymore. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, those couplings will let you couple up to about four miles an hour. They're quite hardy. Okay, we're coupled now, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. So, what's the task? A drop off those at. Hopefully, it won't CP4. take ten years for that, Rob. <laughs> Where is CP4? That's CP4. This one, no, this one in the middle of CP4. So we have to go back to the reversing point, as it's called, and change a couple of those in here. Let's do just that. Were there early steam routes, and did they have Y junction? Um, so the the first steam route was the original, was one of the first routes made for the game, which would be the um, the Somerset and Dorset, um, Somerset and Dorset line. Um, and uh, I can't remember if that had a Y on it. Does TS19 have turntables, uh, Bangor MSUK? Yes, it does indeed. Obviously, it's down to the route in question as to whether they implement that or not. But, for example, Bath Green Park on the original SD had a turntable. It was there from route one. Mm. Um, and some of the newer routes that have got turntables in real life have working turntables in the game. Matt, so if I'm going beyond the reversing point now, because I have to, because I have a bunch of um, wagons behind me, does that mean that I'm going to leave the zone and I would basically yeah, have you're only... Fine. You're fine. Okay. The reversing point's not there anymore, because that was for the previous instruction. Okay. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I actually wanted to show there's another consist um, traveling around here um, in a circle as well. So if I do manage to find it by pressing this button, where are they? They are right here, aren't they? Any idea? Uh, go left. And then go back. You're flicking the camera around too fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so that's the end of the line there, which means we're yeah. up there. So you want to come down yeah. here to the left. Yeah. Oh, there they are. There they are. Hello, friend. Hello, back from 2009. 
some AI. Well, it's not even you. taxing the PC hardware. No, I mean the, the one of the real benefits of these older routes actually is if you've got a lower end PC, these routes run great. Um, so um, yeah, there's um, there's there's lots of uh, there's a number of routes in the older catalog. They're still really really good fun to use, but because they were built for older hardware, you'll find that they actually still run um, really nicely um, on the uh, on your older machines. Will there ever be a Boston, Washington or Boston, New Haven? Those are future project potentials, Massachusetts trains. Um, you'll have to wait and uh, we'll announce anything uh, when it comes to new projects at, at the appropriate time. But nothing on those to announce at the moment, though. Doncaster Works wasn't actually the first one to have a traverser. Um, the uh, <coughs> Didcot on the uh, on the original um, Great Western uh, London to Oxford line was the uh, was the first traverser, which is a like a turntable, but it goes goes sideways. Yep, that's actually pretty nice. I mean, yeah, it's not you can route. definitely get some pretty good experience from this. And operationally, like I said, it's been designed more about like a model railway. It's designed about the. Uh, what you can do on the route yeah, and exactly. the kind that, of operations that's you do, and what it's, I'm talking about, yeah. it'll it'll definitely you can keep busy on it. Yeah, and it's still available. The oldest route there is historically on Steam. I mean, probably it's it's, it's far from being the oldest routes for even railroads, right? So. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Isle of Wight probably would be yeah, just yeah. about the oldest one, although that had a massive update um, as well. How far do we need to go with this? Just stop here. Yeah, and he's on there. Emergency. Oh, that was an accident, but that's fine. I think we're gonna stop here. Um, yep. That was enough. Um, all right, guys. I think um, I hope you enjoyed the stream. We went through nine routes this time, um, which is. Eight more than we usually do, <laughs> and um, we really hope you enjoyed. So this is the first our anniversary stream. We're gonna uh, come back soon for the second anniversary stream in June. We're gonna have a next stream um, on Wednesday dedicated to Train Sim World, and um, we have a pretty pretty decent um, sale going on right now on um, Steam. So if there's anything of interest for you, interest for you, have a look. And thank you very much, Matt, for coming and um, being with us today. And thank we're you. very appreciated. We really hope you guys enjoyed. Um, follow us on social um, pages. Um, have a look at our pages on Steam. Um, those guys who are looking on, uh, who are watching on Steam, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, we really hope you enjoyed. There will be a replay of the stream on our YouTube channels. If you want to find it, just type in um, Train Simulator and you will find our channel easily. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I don't really know much to say. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, we'll see you on Wednesday for the Tees Valley stream. Um, yeah, which is I'm um, really looking forward to showing yep. you that pre-release stream. So as requested, you are as we requested. Give. Yes, and um, <laughs> don't forget there is a pre-order going on right now. So yeah, thank you very much, guys, right. and we'll see you next week. Perfect. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. That's it.